From tailor-made clothes to a tailor-made racing car, and now we're privileged to watch just some of the elaborate preparation that goes into a record-breaking attempt. First, the model stage and exhaustive wind tunnel tests to simulate airflow behavior at high speeds and to determine the best basic shape for the car. The aim of the designers at this works in Abingdon on the River Thames is to produce the fastest one and a half litre car in the world. And once their almost revolutionary design has passed its tests in the model stage, they start to assemble the real thing. Former record-breaking cars built by the same company have a more or less orthodox chassis with a streamlined skin wrapped round it to the best advantage. This time the approach is reversed. The body shape, determined primarily by aerodynamic requirements and the layout of the machinery, and of course driver Sterling Moss, has been planned to fit the shell. This is what we meant by tailor-made. Such factors as the low height mean that Moss has to be fitted in a semi-reclining position. While with the engine at the back of the car, the pedals are only an inch or two from the nose. Everything must be perfect at the speeds for which the car has been designed, four miles a minute. Across the Atlantic now to the United States, for the finest roads in the world are not really as suitable for records up to 10 kilometers as the famous Salt Flats at Bonville, Utah. Thousands of miles by road and sea, just to drive a few miles on a dried up lake. But if all the hopes of this dedicated band of enthusiasts are fulfilled, those few miles will make history. Who better to welcome the car than Captain George Iston on the left, who has held the world's land speed record three times and has broken more records than any man alive. Now at 60, he is in administrative charge of the company's record-breaking activities in America. After a test run with an American driver, the car is given a final checkover before the actual record attempt. The previous flying mile record achieved by Colonel Goldie Gardner in 1939 was 203 miles an hour. In his attempt, Sterling Moss hopes to exceed four miles a minute. The officials are in their places, the electronic timing equipment is ready, and Moss simply hurtles away. Record attempts, of course, have to be made with two runs in opposite directions, the official speed being the average of the two. But on this first run, it's soon obvious that records will be piling up. And on the decisive return run, we're sure. One mile, 245.11 miles an hour. Five miles, 235.69 miles an hour. Altogether, five world records and five more American records into the bargain. For his part, Moss has simply maintained the fine tradition that Eiston and the company's experts began when he was only a year old. A tradition that is today keeping the British motoring industry out in front.